Now, this isn't like a new thing. You could argue that we're kind of late to the party, but Genshin Impact seems to have had some strong legs these past few months. Now, it's a free-to-play open-world RPG, playable on mobile, where it really hit it big, but it's also on PC and PlayStation. Now, despite its fair share of controversies, this thing has become quite the juggernaut and is yet another win on the board for China-based game development. Developed and published by Miyoho out of Shanghai, Genshin Impact's influence has become huge. It's something that really can't be ignored if you're looking at the wider game industry. Not just console games, but mobile games and everything it encompasses. What started as something that looked like a Breath of the Wild knockoff has become a free-to-play powerhouse. We never covered the game with a Before You Buy video. You know, we just weren't really interested in this video isn't really a review or anything, it's just taking a look at how and why Genshin Impact took over as one of the best free-to-play open world games. It's got some good stuff and some of the bad stuff the gaming industry has too sometimes, so let's just dive in and take a look at this fascinating situation. So just to get you guys caught up in case you haven't played it, what it is, it's an open world RPG adventure. At the start, you choose between a brother or sister character who is cast out after fighting off an evil and you lose your powers and you're looking for your sibling. You're quickly paired up with a sidekick that's like a companion you picked up on your travels who kind of acts as like a magical tutorial menu fairy and you're off and running. Combat involves striking enemies with weapons, long-ranged or short-ranged melee depending on who you're playing as, and a magic attack as well as an ult. You can pick up party members and swap between them on the fly. They all have different use cases, and although they can do most of the same things, the variations are useful and kind of fun to mess with. Now you can run, jump, dodge, swim, climb, and glide with a limited stamina meter in a similar fashion to what was at least popularized by Breath of the Wild. There's a large open world with grassy plains in the center and multiple biomes to explore, and it feels pretty vast. Even on mobile, despite some pop-in and some graphical stuff, you can still get a good sense of a large open world in front of you on a tiny little screen. There's legit dungeon crawling, there's lots of loot and resources to pick up, and a bunch of good old-fashioned RPG elements. You know, you level up your character, you dump resources into weapons to make them stronger and level them up, there's stats, buffs, specializations, all that stuff, all that good meaty stuff you're looking for in an RPG. You can place tiered artifacts you find on your adventure on your character to give them certain bonuses, and you can enchant those items to give them more power. You have attributes, new abilities you can learn, there's quite a lot here, and it all just feels like a fully featured RPG. To towns with NPCs with names above their heads, to all the features I mentioned earlier, to being able to play cooperatively with three other people, there's built-in functionalities, pretty much most things you would expect from a paid-for console or PC game, as well as just some very pretty visuals and some exciting, energetic cutscenes. The writing, in, in my opinion, if you ask me, is crazy and all over the place and nonsense, but the production values are otherwise very high and people have really kind of latched onto this thing. So there's a lot here, and I'm betting that's why so many people really stuck onto this game. It's a real, genuine video game, and it's free. You can play it in various places, too. There's crossplay. That is a very big deal for some specific players. There's a bunch of options and features and stuff to do. Many things that you do in a more expensive game, but you can do it here for free, and it's not really compromised. You know, it doesn't really feel half-assed. Now, according to GameDaily.biz, Genshin Impact was downloaded a whopping 23 million times during its first week on mobile platforms, meaning iOS and Android, when it launched September of 2020. That's a massive number for a game that launched internationally and seemingly came out of nowhere. It's not the biggest mobile game ever, but for, you know, a more traditional hardcore game like this that isn't like Candy Crush or Subway Surfers, that's a very big deal. Between mobile and other platform numbers, GamesIndustry.biz reported that Mayoho's revenue was about $800 million by the end of 2020. And Sensor Tower more recently reports they flew past $1 billion on mobile in less than six months. That makes Genshin Impact like number three in highest revenue app games, next to PUBG Mobile and Honor of Kings. And while, yes, the powerhouse Chinese audience may have boosted this thing at launch, it's not just China. Genshin Impact reportedly had the biggest revenue from, of course, China, but also Japan, South Korea, and, you guessed it, the United States. 
how is it so big? This thing is nuts, right? Like, well, it's like we said earlier, it offers a lot and it feels like a real game. Plus, factor in the early stages of the pandemic. You know, when this game launched, many countries and areas were in some shape or form in a lockdown mode. And while everyone was bored and preoccupied with their mobile phones and computers and gaming, guess what was there to pick up the slack? Especially if you were maybe low on funds and big on time, Genshin Impact. Like other games, uh, something like say an Animal Crossing, the launch timing during a pandemic meant a lot more captive eyes and, and more people were around and had some spare time to possibly give this free to play RPG a shot. Oh, plus it blew up on Twitch. So lots of streamers jumped into it and it was pretty big on the charts for a minute. And sometimes Twitch success leads to actual game success. And that was definitely the case here because the game was free. So if you were watching your favorite streamer play the game, Game, you could think to yourself, what do I have to lose? Might as well download it and try it and get it on the fun, right? The other big reason for Genshin's impact, sorry, um, has to be the monetization. Yes, my friends, this is a free to play game after all, and it has to pay for itself somehow, right? The game has high production values, and after launch, they staffed up even more to support the game and give it more updates. That revenue was put to use, but it was earned and fueled predominantly by in-app mobile purchases. Statistically, it's like a thing that mobile players pay up way more than PC or console players. And uh, yeah, so the revenue came from the game's gotcha system and the monetization systems as a whole, really. Genshin Impact has a battle pass, multiple different confusing currencies, uh, which you can all buy into with real life money. But the gotcha system is all about the luck of the draw. You pay some money and you hope to get a cool thing like putting a coin into one of those little machines and hoping you get the little plastic toy out of it that you really specifically wanted. And Genshin doesn't immediately show you all of its monetization cards, just like a hint at first, and then kind of lets you get wowed by the game. But once your levels are up, then the fun begins and the game introduces you to all the elements. Uh, wishes in the game are essentially the main thing. That, that's what they're called. It's all around limited time stuff too. So stuff rotates pretty consistently and always feels like it's your last chance or you're getting a discount and you're gonna wanna do wishes on characters or weapons and try to get those good, cool characters or super rare weapons. The rolling for a random character in the hopes of getting a cool one is something that was not by any means invented by Genshin Impact. It's been a thing for a minute and a lot of people have been hooked on it and a lot of people have really argued its ethics. There's a system called the pity system so you can always kind of get something and there is at least some level of transparency but the odds win rate is apparently shockingly low and at the same time the wishing earning the wishes and even doing the roles are all earned in different ways and seem complicated and confusing on purpose i'm not explaining it well because i don't love this game or anything but someone who's hooked on it can probably explain it better than me because the game trains you to know this stuff but you're earning some of this stuff through a free or paid battle pass so there are opportunities but also opportunities to spend. There's currencies you can buy with your credit card and convert into others in the hopes of getting a higher chance to win the character or thing you really want. If you spend your real money, you have a higher chance technically. And that seems kind of lame, doesn't it? Things are worded deceptively, the currencies are a bit convoluted, all in the hopes of the game catching you as a quote unquote whale or a video game industry term for like people not really spending any money on free to play games, but every so often one person comes along and gets hooked and spends a bunch and it makes up for all the other customers who are playing for free. Then uh, not really monetization wise, but there is a bit of a progression wall later in the game that many players have been venting about online. The game is fun and compelling until it feels like it becomes more of a meaningless grind. That's gonna vary from player to player. Everybody has a different tolerance for grind in progression, but it is a thing worth noting, but it's all nothing compared to that monetization stuff. This isn't buying a cool skin or a DLC map pack or something. This is more on the line of the loot box online gambling stuff. The bad stuff hardcore gamers have been railing against for seemingly years now. Now we see less and less of this stuff in big mainstream AAA games because they want to avoid some of that bad press, but mobile games like Genshin Impact here still have this awful stuff front and center. 
Sure, many will argue that you can ignore a lot of it, and many people I know personally have and still manage to enjoy this game. But for every person that can play this big open world game and ignore it, there's tons more casual people that get hooked and put some hard earned money into this thing. We can't tell you how to live, it's your money. You can spend it however you want, you worked for it, but it's not really making games any better. Now it doesn't matter if the open world is compelling or the gameplay is fun, it's just not a good thing to get ripped off. It depends on the player, but if you have an addictive personality, maybe avoid it. So yes, Genshin Impact is one of the best performing free open world games, but at what cost? Well, some pretty bad monetization. Is it worth it? I don't know, that's up to you. The game isn't quite our cup of tea here at GameRank, but there are some interesting notes to its success. Being free while still offering a fully fledged game, uh, the fun game foundation, but how it's actually made its money and the in-game revenue in that purchase stuff, not so much. But this is our analysis of Genshin Impact. We wanted to talk about it because it's interesting as number one, it being one of the biggest games for quite a few months now, but also number two, just the state of gaming itself. It's easy to just write off mobile games gaming because it's adjacent to PC and console gaming, but bundled as a whole in the larger gaming quote unquote ecosystem, this Genshin Impact game will, I know this is so stupid to say, but it will have an impact. So we want to hear from you guys in the comments. Maybe you're playing and you don't care about the monetization. Maybe you've had a fun time with this free game. Maybe you've played it and you immediately got turned off by the loot box stuff. Whoever you are, we want to hear from you. If you spent real money in the game, we'd love for you to admit in the comments how much you did. Let's talk anything Genshin Impact. Maybe you really like the gameplay, maybe you find the world compelling on your phone, anything down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and our analysis though, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We would really appreciate that if you enjoyed this video, man. Uh, but if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.